Hello YouTube. Today we're going to take a look at the Mr. FPGA setup. And um, what we're going to look at is basically all the the parts required to assemble that and we'll also assemble it as well. We will split the parts into two sections. Parts that um, are optional and parts that are required. So let's start off by taking a look at what we've got. The first thing up is a DE10 nano board. Basically that's the heart of the, the system. It's got the CPU and all the parts on it. So let's see what we've got. Some instructions. Got USB. We have a power supply. That might be the first issue. It seems to have uh, an American plug on it. Being in the UK, that's not going to be much use for me, so I'll need to see what else I've got there. It appears to be a 5 volt 2 amp. I should have one of those. I think they're the little feet that go on the bottom of it. And this is a and this is a main board itself. So this is one of the main parts required. Next part up we have the I.O. board. It has some quick access buttons. The VGA out. USB SD card slot. Again, this is another optional part, but it makes life a lot easier. It's the it's a USB board. It gives us one to gives us gives us an extra seven USB ports, so that's good for the likes of USB sticks, controllers, and things like that. Next part is a memory module. Again, this is optional, but pretty much recommended as you can only run a, a few different cores off the base board. So I went for the 128 RAM. I think that pretty much runs everything that's out on it at the moment. You can get them in 32 and 64. From what I've seen, there's not much price difference between those and the 64. So for the sake of future proofing the system, I've just went for the 128. The next part I have is the, the case basically to house it all together. Again pretty much optional as you could just put it together and plug it in that way but best to have it all kind of enclosed I'm sure. This is the next part. What we have here is the clock module. What this is, does is allow you to save the time and date onto the system. Again it's really optional this part really that's only really going to come into play when you've got kind of role playing games and stuff that saves time and dates onto them but again it's fairly inexpensive so I decided just to go with it to complete the setup so now we've got all the parts together let's go ahead and assemble this What I'll do is I'll start with the base plate and the USB board. So what I'll do is I'll put these standoffs in. We'll 
what I'm doing is I'm using the using the small ones. What I'm doing is I'm using the smaller standoffs, and screwing them into the base of the case. They're on we'll add the we'll add the USB board. It's really like a sandwich the bit goes together. I'm just finger tightening them, I don't want to over tighten it and crack the balls, so I'm just doing it with my fingers, it doesn't need too much force to tighten them up. She won't need pliers or anything like that. Nice, now that's that's attached to the base of the case. Let's go for the next part. I've taken the screws and removed the the plate of the DE10. Now what we're gonna do is add the the USB bridge. Connects the USB board to the DE10 board. So let's go ahead with that. Let's see how that lines up. That that attaches to the pin header there. Now let's attach the the D10 board to the USB board. Next steps, add more of these. Now to install the the clock board, I had a little look online and I can't see any clear instructions where to put this but it really only looks as like if it would fit in one place and that would be there so let's go ahead and install it there. Next up we'll install the I.O. board again, this really only goes one way. There's a little pin header there and here. Just take our time, line the pins up. Just slot it in place. Gently push down until it locks in. It's on both sides. Now we'll install the memory module. The side faces outwards, so that'll go on this side. Like so. That's the memory installed.
Now we'll secure that in with the spade. Now we'll start to line the panels up off the case and slot them into place. They're all labelled so it's we just match that up to the sides. Maybe that side. So put a little bit of tape all these that should hold the buttons in place What I'll do is I'll just hold it upside down. I'm going to just line it up and click it in. There we are. And the final touch is the four screws. So there we have it, this time a fully assembled muster, all the panels correct. Quite a neat wheat looking system, especially in the fluorescent sort of yellow case, looking very nice. So next video we'll look at setting it up and some games on it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.